Before proceeding to the next section, let's try to answer some practice questions. Good luck! According to the shared responsibility model, which of the following are considered AWS responsibility? Select three choices. Configuring security groups on EC2 instances. Maintaining network infrastructure. Implementing physical security controls at data centers. Patching software on EC2 instances. Maintaining servers that run EC2 instances. Setting permissions for Amazon S3 objects. It is going to be B, C, and E. AWS is responsible for anything related to infrastructure. AWS has no control or visibility about what is in the account. Remember the shared security model and that AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud only and not for the security of what is in the cloud. According to the shared responsibility model, which of the following are considered customer's responsibility? Select three choices. Configuring security groups on EC2 instances. Maintaining network infrastructure. Implementing physical security controls at data centers. Patching software on EC2 instances. Maintaining servers that run EC2 instances. Setting permissions for Amazon S3 objects. This time it is going to be A, D, and F. The question tests your knowledge about the security in the cloud portion of the shared model. A customer is configuring SCPs in AWS organizations. Which resources can the SCPs be applied to? Select three answers. IAM roles. IAM groups. Root organizational account. Root user. IAM users. Individual member account. Organizational units. Remember that service control policies that are used to restrict permissions can be applied either at the root organizational level or to just a single member account or to a group of accounts that are grouped together under an OU. What is the name of the AWS service through which you can download third-party compliance reports? Amazon Compliance and Control Amazon Artifact Amazon Inspector Amazon Reports This is a question that will most probably show up on your exam. Do not forget please about Artifact Service, you can use it to download compliance reports and also sign agreements with AWS. Which tasks can you perform with AWS CloudTrail? Select two answers. Monitor your AWS infrastructure and resources in real time. Track user activities and requests. View metrics and graphs to monitor performance of resources. Filter logs to assist with operational analysis and troubleshooting. It is going to be B and D. CloudTrail is a service that helps you to collect user activity logs and filter and search across them for troubleshooting and analysis. Which service can be used to review the security of your Amazon S3 buckets by checking for open access permissions? AWS CloudTrail Amazon CloudWatch Amazon Inspector AWS Trusted Advisor Making your S3 buckets available for open access permissions or what is known as public access is against security best practices. Remember that Trusted Advisor compares your environment against AWS best practices across five categories, one of them being security. Which categories are included in the AWS Trusted Advisor dashboard? Select two answers. Reliability. Scalability. Performance. Elasticity. Cost optimization. It is going to be C and E. If you can recall the names of the five categories of Trusted Advisor, you can see that A, B, 
and D are invalid answers. What is the name of the AWS service that can be used to protect us from DDoS attacks? Amazon Guard Duty Amazon Inspector AWS Shield AWS KMS It is going to be Shield, this is the service that we can rely on to stop DDoS attacks. An employee requires temporary access to access some S3 buckets. Which IAM identity should be used for this scenario? IAM user. IAM group. IAM policy. IAM role. Remember the strategy that we mentioned earlier in previous practice questions videos. Look for keywords. The keyword here is temporary access and this should immediately trigger you to think about IAM roles as we have explained in the IAM video. Which statement describes an IAM policy? The identity that is established when you create the account. An identity you assume to gain temporary credentials. A document that grants or denies permissions to AWS services. A dual-factor authentication mechanism. IAM policies are just documents that define some allow and deny statements that shape your permissions that you can and cannot do on AWS resources. I hope you have got most of the questions, if not all of them, correct. If you have scored less than 75%, please rewatch the previous videos again and attempt one more time before proceeding to the next section.